Welcome to the last month at the Federal Circuit, a look at recent Federal Circuit decisions impacting the intellectual property community. Finnegan partner Kathleen Daly joins us now to discuss three cases. Kathleen, the first case we'll look at is Arthrax v. Smith & Nephew, Inc., which deals with the constitutionality of the appointment of judges. Tell us a little bit more about the case. This was a significant case that the Federal Circuit recently issued because it did hold that the current system of appointment of administrative judges or ADJs violated the appointments clause of the Constitution. And this is significant because it does raise questions about what happens to cases pending before the Patent Trial and Appeal Board or PTAB and cases on appeal from the PTAB to the Federal Circuit. And more specifically in this case, the Federal Circuit held that appointment of APJs violated the Appointments Clause because it found that APJs are principal officers, and principal officers can only be appointed by the President with the advice and consent of the Senate. APJs, however, are not appointed by the President with the advice and consent of the Senate and instead are appointed by the Secretary of Commerce in consultation with the Director of the PTO, violating the Appointments Clause. Thus, the Federal Circuit's decision in this case that the Appointments Clause was violated when the APJs were appointed stems from its finding that APJs are principal officers. And to determine whether they were principal officers or inferior officers who do not require presidential appointment, the court considered three factors. One, whether an appointed official has the power to review and reverse the APJ's decisions. Two, the level of supervision and oversight an appointed official has over the APJ. And three, the appointed official's power to remove an APJ. Considering these factors, the Arthrex Court found that APJs are principal officers. The court noted that no presidentially appointed officer has independent statutory authority to review a final written decision by the APJs. The court said that the director, while appointed by the president, is only one member of the board and an IPR must be decided by three board judges. The Federal Circuit found that there is no provision providing the director the power to single-handedly review or nullify or reverse a final written decision by a panel of APJs. The second question, the question of oversight, the Federal Circuit found that the director's oversight authority over the APJs amounts to little more than high-level, arm's-length control. And on the final question, the director's power to remove APJs, the Federal Circuit said that the director and the Secretary of Commerce lack unfettered removal authority. So considering all these factors, the court determined that the APJs are principal officers, but since they were not appointed by the president and approved by the Senate, the Federal Circuit stated that the current structure of the board violates the appointments clause. And what's the effect of that constitutional violation? Well, the Orthodox Court did consider whether there was any remedy for this situation, since it has now held that the current structure of the board violates the Appointments Clause. And it concluded that it could sever from the statutory scheme the restrictions on removal of the APJs. And by removing any restriction on removing APJs, the Federal Circuit found that APJs would no longer be principal officers. The court said that this was the narrowest possible modification to the statutory scheme that cured the constitutional violation. And finally, then, the court did actually have to determine what was it going to do with the decision in this case. And the Arthrex Court decided to vacate and remand the PTAP's decision since the panel of APJs deciding the case were not constitutionally appointed at the time it made the decision. The court further held that a new panel of APJs must be designated on remand and a new hearing granted. Also of note, the government had argued that Arthrex Appointment Clause Challenge was not timely because it was raised for the first time on appeal, but the Federal Circuit disagreed, stating that Arthrex properly and timely raised the issue before the first body capable of granting relief, which was the Federal Circuit, so the court held it was timely. What impact does this decision have on cases that were on appeal before this case was decided? Well, we started getting some answers to that question on the same day as the Arthrex decision. In a decision issued on the same day as the Arthrex case, the Federal Circuit canceled oral argument in a case between Unilock 2017 and Facebook and vacated and remanded the decision to the board for proceedings consistent with the Arthrex case. And since then, there have been a number of cases where the Federal Circuit has vacated and remanded the board's decision where the patent owner appellant raised an appointments clause challenge in its opening brief.
For instance, in Bedgear versus Fredman Brothers Furniture Company, decided on November 7th, the Federal Circuit vacated and remanded the case to the PTAB for proceedings consistent with the Arthrex decision. The Federal Circuit noted that Bedgear argued in its opening brief that the PTAB's decision was in violation of the Appointments Clause. In that case, though, Judge Dyke and Judge Newman concurred in the decision stating that the panel was bound to follow Arthrex, but also noted that requiring a new hearing before a new panel is not required to remedy the constitutional violation. In still other decisions where the appellant did not raise an appointment clause challenge in its opening brief, the Federal Circuit has declined to vacate and remand the appeal. For instance, on November 1st, in a custom media versus dish network appeal, after briefing was complete and prior to oral argument, the patent owner moved to vacate the PTAB decision and remand the case to the PTO based on the Arthrex case, arguing the PTAB had violated the appointments clause. The Federal Circuit denied that motion on November 1st because the patent owner had not raised an appointments clause challenge in its opening brief or in a motion prior to filing its opening brief. Similarly, on November 19th, in Santa Fe Aventis v. Milan Pharmaceuticals, a panel of the Federal Circuit rejected a request to vacate the board's decision and remand the case consistent with Arthrex. Because the patent owner had not raised an appointments clause challenge in its opening brief and therefore forfeited the argument, in that case, though, Judge Newman dissented on the merits and on the finding that the appointments clause challenge was forfeited. Judge Newman stated that it is well established that when the law changes while a case is on appeal, the change law applies and that the patent owner here is entitled to the benefit of that decision. In still another case, a panel of the Federal Circuit took yet another approach to an appeal from the PTAB. In Polaris Innovations v. Kingston, which was argued before the Arthrex decision came down, the Federal Circuit asked for additional briefing in response to a constitutional challenge based on Arthrex. The Federal Circuit asked for briefing on the constitutional question, including whether severing removal restrictions obviates the need to vacate and remand the decision. So what we've seen so far from the Federal Circuit is, is a number of decisions, and what we do know is that there still remains a number of questions as to what's going to happen in these cases as more and more cases appear before it. There's still open questions as to what will happen in appeals where the PTAB decision was issued after the Arthrex decision. So we'll be looking forward to more decisions and clarity from the Federal Circuit on this issue. And what about pending cases before the PTAB? Well, so far we have gotten some decisions on pending cases in the PTAB. The PTAB appears to be taking the position that the Arthrex decision cured the constitutional infirmity and that all decisions issued since then are properly from constitutionally appointed APJs. The next case we'll explore is Enri IPR Licensing, Inc., which deals with obviousness. Tell us more. This case is interesting for a number of reasons, one being that it's a decision that's come back to the Federal Circuit after being remanded to the board, and another being in that it addresses what the board can consider as part of its record in making a decision. The first time this case had come to the Federal Circuit, it vacated and remanded the decision on one claim, finding not enough support in the record for the board's obviousness finding. The Federal Circuit had found that the board did not identify sufficient evidence of a motivation to combine the relevant prior art references. The Federal Circuit remanded the case to the PTAB rather than reversing the PTAB's decision because it could not be sure that the record was totally devoid of any possible motivation to combine the relevant references. On remand, the PTAB again found the claim at issue would have been obvious, and it went back up to the Federal Circuit, where the Federal Circuit again vacated the decision because the board's decision remained unsupported. In this case, the board relied on evidence from a non-instituted ground, which by the board's own rules is not part of the record of an instituted IPR. The Federal Circuit held that the board cannot rely on evidence relating solely to grounds on which it never instituted. So the takeaway from this case is that the board can only rely on evidence of record, and that does not include evidence from grounds on which the board did not institute the IPR. 
And why is this of relevance to patent owners and petitioners? Because it gives some clear guidance on what the board can rely on in making its decision. And from this case, the takeaway is that the board can only rely on evidence of record, and that does not include evidence from grounds that were not instituted. The next case is Game and Technology versus Wargaming. Tell us about this case. Game and Technology versus Wargaming raise the question of what it means to be served with a complaint in the context of the time bar provision of 35 U.S.C. 315B. That statutory provision states that an inter-party review may not be instituted if the petition requesting the proceeding is filed more than one year after the date on which the petitioner, real party in interest, or privy of the petitioner is served with a complaint alleging infringement of the patent. In this case, the Federal Circuit held that the Board did not err in finding the petitioner was not time barred under 35 U.S.C. 315B because petitioner Wargaming Group was not properly served with a complaint alleging infringement of the patent more than one year before it filed its IPR petition. The question of whether the petitioner was served with a complaint arose because while the complaint was served on the petitioner more than a year before the petition was filed, the summons accompanying the complaint did not have the court's seal or the clerk's signature. The board held that meant the service of the complaint did not comply with Rule 4A of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure. The Federal Circuit had previously held that served with a complaint in 35 U.S.C. 315B means presented with a complaint or delivered a complaint in a manner prescribed by law. Here, the board found that service did not comply with Rule 4A, and the Federal Circuit found that the patent owner did not sufficiently raise or show any error in that decision on appeal. Thus, for at least this case, it appears that being served with a complaint means being served with a summons and a complaint. And finally, Kathleen, this case also addresses a procedural issue. What is it? In this case, the PTAB had questioned whether it had authority to determine whether service was proper and thought it should leave that to the district court. The Federal Circuit held, though, that the PTAB must determine whether service was proper because it is a requirement of 35 U.S.C. 315B. The Federal Circuit also stated that the determination of whether service was proper should ordinarily be made prior to institution. So the Federal Circuit made it clear to the PTAB that it has a duty to determine whether service was proper so that it can implement the requirements of 35 U.S.C. 315B. Our guest has been Kathleen Daly, a partner at Finnegan, one of the largest IP law firms in the world. For more commentary on intellectual property news and issues, to listen to other podcasts, and to receive additional information on the firm, please visit www.finnegan.com. Thank you for listening to this podcast from Finnegan.